Hi guys, I bet you think I've gone mad. Another set of tongs, uh, hot fitting tongs. Well this time I'm going to do a single sided version. Still out of a, a pair of clenching tongs. This time it's an old gooseneck pair. Now these are well and truly had it. I've had these for yonks. Um, but while I've been off, I've been clearing through cupboards and chucking stuff out and i found all these things. We're going to grind and rivet off of this one and take them apart. Um, because it's going to be easier to make them uh, in two pieces. So, let's get it up in the vise. We'll see if we can get them apart. Sometimes these are a bit tricky to remove. Um, as you can see, there's no obvious sort of rivet head on either side of these, so I'm just going to try and reveal where the rivet actually is, just by grinding the surface off. You can often see exactly where the the rivet sits. You can see that one because that's where it rotates, but it's still flush. So it's obviously got a, a bit of a countersink in there somewhere. Right, you can just about see it if this will focus, which it probably won't. It's so dark in here yet again. You can just about see it in that one. You can see it better there. That one I think is the countersink one. So let's see if we can get it on the anvil and give it some beans and get it apart. I'm just going to use a punch that I normally use for punching stud holes. Put it over the hardy hole or the pritchel hole. You see it's sort of starting to move but it's not having it particularly well. Sometimes these are sort of pressed into one side, um, so it's t really tight in one side and loose in the other, and then they just sort of rib it over in the countersink. Um, I think these are an old diamond pair, or made by diamond. Um, so the donkey's years old. I think I might need to get a bigger hammer because it's not having much impression. It's started to move it but not a great deal and I'm trying to work out which side it's going to be best to come out. Obviously you'd think the countersink side but you never know. It's got a slightly bigger punch and this time I'm going to put it in some tongs because this hand's giving me a bit of jip. So I'm just going to hold it in a pair of tongs and use a bigger hammer, slightly bigger, not that much. I suppose I could get my big club hammer out, but this should do it. Oh, now they're starting to move now. Let's zoom the camera out a little bit. And these should come out a bit easier now. Yeah, it's starting to move. There, yeah, that's got it. Yeah, you can see now that they're coming apart quite easily. Well, not easily, but they are coming apart. <coughs> Excuse me. So a slightly smaller punch. That's it. Just popped it through. Oh, there we go. It's blasted hand. Right. So. We've got them apart. Um, what am I going to do next? Right, uh, this one I'm going to leave alone, I think, because that should grip the side of the shoe nicely. This is the one we're going to cut off and draw out, because obviously it's going to grow. So that's why you need to cut a piece off, because I want them to end up back that length, so that they're equal. So I'm just going to. Oh, what's going on? oh yeah, the fire's going out, so I'm just going to have to put the fire back on, or stoke it up a bit and get it going, because that's almost gone out. I've got to clean out all the clinker and crap. And whilst I was doing that, I've just cleaned up, because this one had been broken, so I've just run a quick bit of weld across it again, um, and cleaned it up, because I think it was going to break. Once I'd got them apart, there was an obvious uh, split. So I've just quickly welded that up. 
whilst the fire was getting itself going again. That's the trouble with this fire, if you leave it for any length of time it clinkers up in no time at all, just ticking over. It's funny because it's better when it's being worked. Right, just taking off about half an inch. Use the available heat whilst it's there. Now what we need to do is draw it down to, oh yeah, wobbly. I had someone ask about these hardies, how, how to make them tight. Well you don't want them tight. That one's a bit loose but if they're too tight you get them stuck and you can never get the blooming things out so they're supposed to be wobbly. Um, maybe as I say not that wobbly but there you go. Anyway, um, yeah I'm going to draw this down to similar sort of size and shape to a stamp uh, which is the tool that you use for stamping the holes, nail holes in the shoe um, but it's, it's a bit smaller. Uh, it's sort of a bit bigger than a pritchel, a bit smaller than a stamp um, but it's obviously it's got to go in the nail hole if you can see that it'll focus to a farrier you'd, you'd just probably they'd probably appreciate what I mean by a bit smaller than a stamp and a bit bigger than a pritchel um, you obviously want to keep a fair bit of meat on them because you don't want it to snap or break or when you're carrying get get it too hot um, now this one uh, I don't know what I'm saying there uh, no, completely forgotten what I was saying there. Right, so this, I say, we're just going to draw it out. We want a bit of meat so it doesn't get too hot when you're carrying and sort of weaken it and it doesn't snap or blah blah blah. But it's got to go into the, the fullering of the shoe quite nicely. Let's put these back together an idea of how we're coming. Now you see that's a bit long now so I think I'm probably going to have to cut some off but I'm going to leave it for the time being because we might be able to or have to do a bit of bending of this one the opposite way because of the pitch on the nail holes I want to get the tongs fairly upright. Um, you'll see what I mean in a second. Now see they're leaning out quite a bit. I'd like to get them more up over the top of the shoe. Not horrendously, you know, not right over the middle, but not as far leaning out as that. So to compensate for that, I want to bend that bottom bit under. So it brings the top up. Because you see it gets worse as you go further because of the pitch. But generally you carry with the heel nail hole anyway. That should, in theory, the nail hole should be dead upright. But these are machine made shoes and they're not always upright as you can see. Um, so when it comes together I want that one upright or fairly upright as well when it's actually gripping. Um, and as you can see it's not uh, leaning out quite a lot and the hole doesn't line up much. So let's play about with this one a bit more, bend that in, see if we can get them a bit more upright. Sorry if I'm waffling but I don't really know what I'm doing so I'm sort of winging it a bit. I know what I want but as with all my projects this is a, the first time I've done this particular job with a pair of uh, clenching tongs and there's a smaller shoe because obviously it's got to fit both, a small one and a big one. Um, so I'm just going to bend that round a bit, put a little hook on the end of it. Try and get the pair of them upright. That's better. That's the way I want it. You see, that's much better, but now. The, it's much more upright but the outside one is nowhere near so I think what we're going to have to do is actually bend the jaw from much further up let's give you a better look from close up <clears throat> excuse me 
Right, you can see that that's still too long because those holes don't line up. That's where I want it. And that's where it actually is. So we will have to shorten this one a bit more. But the shape is better. You can see actually where I put that dropper well just below the rivet hole. So that's where it is. So that's got to be shorter. So I think we better whip a bit off of there. Back with the sloppy hardy. Right, so I've had about another quarter of an inch off. But obviously that means that I've got to still draw it out a bit more to get the point back on it. Um, and if you sort of worry about getting the point right, it's very similar to the Pritchell, obviously. Uh, and to get that right, if you want a guide, get a nail, a five or a six, cut the head off and use that as your guide. Because obviously that's what sits in into the fullering. So you can use that as your guide, not only for things like this, but for doing your Pritchell, sharpening them up, sharpening your stamps, etc. It's always a handy guide. Right, so we've got it roughly back to the right sort of shape, but now I want to bend it one way and kink the whole thing the opposite way. Because that, I think, is going to be the only way I'm going to get them to come upright. So, how am I going to do this? Let's put the kink on first. Let's try it. So that's got that back up right again. Just want to check that it's going in. Yeah, it's going in quite nicely. As far as it needs to go. Now this one. And so that's about where I want it, but they're not. It's not touching. So if I reckon, if I kink that whole thing over. I don't know, I'm thinking about it, but I think that's what I'm going to do. It's a case of either get this the other one hot and bend that in, or bend the one I'm actually working on. You see that's nicely upright, but they're too close, so I think that's what I'm going to have to do, is bend that that would be the easiest way rather than having to fiddle about with the other one, just bend that one from there slightly. Then at least we haven't mucked about with both bits. Ah, yeah, sorry it's a bit disjointed this one, but I've had nothing but interruptions today whilst I've been making this video, so although it might look as if I'm doing it all in one go, I've had to stop and start and stop and start. People interrupting me, hands giving me jip. Um, still, never mind. Such is life. Right, so, which way do I want to bend it? Uh, down, that way, I think. So I want to get the bottom of the rivet hole so I don't distort it and knock that in a bit. Now, hopefully, that will be enough to get, get it the right way around. Come on. Get your shit together. Right, now that's better because you've got a gap in the tongs now so you can actually grip. And one of them's upright, although the other one isn't. So I might have to put a little bit more bend on there. And it's still a little bit high, so I will probably do that with the grinder. I don't know as I can be bothered to um, Cut more off, so I'm going to grind it just down both sides and off the bottom, tidy it up, do it all with a grinder now. So I'll let them cool down a little bit first before I do that, or we'll let that one cool down. Right, I've given it, it's still hot, but I've given it a bit of a grind up, shortened it slightly, just taken the uh, rough bits off, and I've made a, 
a rivet. I've had to machine down um, the shank of a 8mm bolt because an 8mm bolt wouldn't go through it, it was too tight. So I've just machined it down just a touch so it's a nice fit in the hole. Now before I stick it all together I'm just going to give it a final clean up. Not that it needs it but makes it look a bit nicer. Start off with a wire brush which would be handy if it was plugged in. So I'll just get the worst off with a wire brush. As I say these these tongs have been set in a cupboard for probably 15 years or more, maybe longer. Um, I haven't used a gooseneck pair for God knows how many years. So I say, while I've been off, not doing a lot, I'm trying, not very successfully, to have a bit of a clear up in this hole and chuck stuff out that I don't really need. You know, there's all that stuff that you think, oh, I'll hang on to that, I might be useful. And the stuff in the drawers and in cupboards and on the shelves that have been sat there for donkey's years. Like I said on my other uh, tong, hot fitting tong video, I carry a spare set of tools in the truck anyway, in case of any breakages. So really I don't need any of these others. Um, and they've all been broken at some stage and, and re-welded. They usually worn out the teeth on the on the uh, edges where they grip the nail or grip the bottom of the shoe they've usually gone I've usually sharpened them a few times with the edge of a triangular file and you, but you can only do that so many times uh, and finally you get fed up with them and you just think oh sorry I'll have a new pair um, you know the tools you trade they're not horrendously expensive although Farrier's tools are pretty dear compared with everybody else's tools but I suppose it's because there's not many of us about and they've got to make their money um, but I do like a decent set of tools I like to keep them fairly sharp and fairly keen and when I get a little bit past it I just think so it so just get them a little bit cleaned up I was talk thinking about just taking the this bit of pipe off that I put on the uh, on the reins, I cut the one on the one I forged, cut that one back because I burnt it quite badly. So I might cut the other one back to match. I might even take the whole lot off. But anyway, for now, I just want to get it put back together. Because as usual, though I'm not doing a lot, I'm getting short on time. It's getting a bit dark these days. They're very early, and I've got to take the dog for a walk shortly and because I've had so many blooming interruptions today this 20 minute video has taken me about two hours to do right let's get this rivet riveted Laying it right on the, the rivet so it's getting hot right the way down, not just the top. And then just give it some beans, flatten it down into the counter sink that was there originally. You see, I can't hold anything still with this blooming hand. Now that's gone nice and tight. Well, I say nice and tight, it's gone tight, but you would expect. Some people say, oh, I'll put a bit of paper in between them, or blah, blah, blah. Don't need to, just give my head over the. Uh, Pritchel hole that loosens them up a treat. Just touch that cool down because if you uh, don't keep them moving, they will seize up again. So I'm just going to clean them up. Another final wire brush, and there you go. That's about it. I don't know if you can really see, but. It's another handy tool to stick in the truck for the shoes that you can't use the other sort of uh, hot fitting tongs for. It's just another little tool to have in the box. And that actually holds them quite nicely and tight. I'm quite pleased with that. You'll be able to pull that back on the foot quite
quite nicely. Use your knife on that side if necessary. Yeah, I reckon that's pretty good. And you see that sits flush with the shoe. It's not going to get in the way. Teeth are still fairly sharp or sharp enough to hold on to the shoe. I think that'll do quite nicely. Even with my dodgy hand, I can pick it up. So yeah, quite pleased with that. That'll do. I'll have so many tools in that toolbox, I won't know what to do with myself. So there you go, another version of a clinching tongue. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.